morning, guys. Another Smashworks morning here at Dablo. Listen, we're going to talk about um, the serratus anterior this morning. We're going to be really, really specific on a on a muscle. I got a message from somebody on Instagram. Um, goes by the name of Glutes, so that's all I got. But uh, anyway, this is for you. So you're having an issue with the winged scapula, and that's a problem with a lot of CrossFitters and a lot of people in general. Is that scapula is supposed to stay glued to the uh, to the back of the rib cage, and what happens is it starts to peel away like that. Now, it, it's not just a, an aesthetic thing, it's actually a really, really gnarly functional thing because what the, the scapula needs to do is it needs to be able to protract and retract, elevate and depress, and then it needs to be able to rotate. And what allows that scapula to slide out on the rib cage is that serratus anterior. It, uh, it attaches on eight ribs up under here, and, then, and you can see it on the bumps. Look at a guy like Froney, that's all you see are serratus anterior muscles in here. But uh, it attaches on eight ribs here and then wraps underneath the scapula and attaches on what's called the vertebral border. So it's the, uh, the inside border of the scapula and it's gonna pull that scapula around. So during that reach beyond reach and, uh, and, and a lot of other motions, but here's a really crazy thing. You cannot bring your arm overhead. You cannot do any of that stuff if that serratus anterior isn't working. So if you have a winged scapula, think about it. If that scapula is peeled away from that rib cage, the function of the shoulder is compromised because remember what my rule is, scapula is the shoulder and the shoulder is the scapula, it's the same thing. So what's gonna happen is that scapula is winged out, the mechanics are completely off and all your overhead movements become compromised or non-existent or you tend to muscle them and what's gonna happen is that scapula is gonna be all winged out and I mean I can't, I can't physically do it because I don't have one but if that scapula is winged out, getting your arm overhead like this is not possible. You're gonna wind up muscling it, trying to force it into that position by using all that, the, the accessory muscles, trying to get there, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna be a really unstable overhead position, which means that everything we do in CrossFit where you have to lock out and be nice and stable isn't gonna happen. You see these people, and, and a lot of you can do it, and, and I can do it too, is where we're up top, this is a rest position when we're doing a thruster. Our rest position isn't here, our rest position is up here, because we have the ability to lock out our arms. If you don't have that ability, it becomes a lot harder to do that. And now you're fighting yourself in that constant repetitive movement that we're doing, whether it's a jerk or a snatch or, or a thruster, it doesn't really matter that you need to have this muscle working. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen it up. And, uh, and I want you to do both sides. It doesn't matter if only one side's bugging you, do both sides. So we're gonna loosen it up and I'll show you a really cool stretch, super easy. Then we're gonna go through some drills on how to strengthen it and how to stick that scapula back down against that rib cage. Actually happens pretty fast. You just gotta go through these things uh, you know, a little more than just once or twice. And then the other thing is what everybody misses is there's a muscle in here called the pec minor. Pec minor does what's called reach beyond reach. So if you can see my arm, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go far and then near, far and near. I feel like Grover from Sesame Street, near, far. Um, so what we need to do is we need to loosen that up too because it attaches to something called the coracoid process, which is the same thing that the uh, long head of the bicep attaches to. So that coracoid process, if it's stuck to that and that pec minor right in here is really, really short and tight, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull that scapula down and forward because this needs to be released and what do you think that's gonna do in the back? It's gonna cause that scapula to wing out because it's trying to pull it around that rib cage serratus anterior is already weak, it's gonna peel away like that. So there's two things that need to be addressed. It's missed all the time. And then the last thing is, there's a nerve actually called the long thoracic nerve, comes down around through here and it affects the, uh, the scapula. And a lot of times it gets injured or stretched or bruised up and all this stuff. We take bars in the back of the neck a lot of times, especially doing things like a bear complex when you start to fade on that fifth round and you're on like rep number three and you're doing it with 225 and you get your hand up and it comes back into that squat position, that behind the next squat position, the back squat, and you let it ram into the top of your neck and you drop it in the squat and you toss it up and you catch it again. I mean, that's just constant impact and drive and even the musculature can pull those um, cervical vertebrae out of place. So I'm gonna show you how to stretch what's called the anterior longitudinal ligament. Um, it's a ligament that runs down the front of the spine up in here, so it'll allow you to recover that neck curve as well. All these things come into play when it comes to the, uh, to the serratus anterior. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff. We're gonna release that pec minor, get a little stretch in there so it can unload on that coracoid process, and, uh, and then I'll go through the, uh, the serratus anterior drills as well, all right? So these are super simple, super easy, but super effective. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is grab one of these. This is just a plain old PVC pipe, and we'll go through a stretch. Now I'm gonna get on my knee to do it. It is effective in only one way. Everybody does it, well, probably wrong, but you're gonna grab it like this, you're gonna grab your hand underneath. So right now, it looks like I got a set of nunchucks, all right, from a Bruce Lee movie. 
and everybody rotates back like this. You wanna make it even more effective? Bring your hand out front like this and really, really rotate it. Because what I've just done is I've pulled that scapula around on my rib cage and I've put a little bit more action into that serratus anterior specifically, but now I'm just gonna stretch it and hold it. You can kind of hunt around, a little freestyle. You know, hunt around until you get like right there. For me, I can feel a big stretch. You wanna make it even more active? Turn your head away. Now I turn my head away, it's gonna take all that trap that's attached there as well, because it has little fibers that attach to that scapula. It's gonna take that trap and it's gonna put some tension on it. It's gonna take that um, thoracodorsal fascia and it's gonna put some tension on it as well. Remember that paper tissue between all the muscles? That's what allows the muscles to, uh, to move and be really smooth. So this is something you wanna take uh, into consideration. Is you wanna peel that away from that muscle and allow it to slide the way it's supposed to. Trust me, we're gonna glue this thing down the way it's supposed to be. So that's number one, do that. Number two is you wanna activate this thing. So you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, peel away that pec minor first. Oh, this one's just abysmal, this mobility. Let me move this just so we can see, because we need this right here. So I'm gonna go to this side so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna take the ball. The ball's gonna be sitting right in here, and we're gonna work our way. You can see I'm kinda of doing a little funky squat here. Don't squat like that. So we're gonna get all in here, and we're gonna get all underneath here. All we're gonna be doing is we're gonna bring our a palm out, so you're gonna externally rotate the arm so you can really, really put some rotation in there. And you're gonna be bringing your arm up like this, and then you're gonna be bringing it forward and back, and then you're gonna activate it. So you're gonna punch out and bring in. So when I say punch out, it means you're gonna do this, and then back with the arm. The whole time the ball is there. All you gotta do is take the ball, put your finger on it, it's how easy it is. You can take a voodoo band and wrap this onto the, onto the rig if you need to, but you're gonna take the ball, you're gonna find that funky spot, and oh God. I told you the workout I did yesterday, it's friggin' gnarly. Something called Frantasy Land, and I didn't know it was a team workout, so I did all of it, because I decided to watch Hobart and, uh, and Froning do it. And so I went, eh, whatever, fittest guy in history, I could try it, right? And uh, completely destroyed me, so I feel this a lot after all those muscle ups. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up front like this, put your hand on the ball and just stabilize it so it can stay against the rig, because right now I don't have a voodoo band holding it in. So you're just gonna bring your arm all the way up, and if you look, you can see where the ball is. It's tucked in right below where the axle is, right below the armpit. And I'm gonna grab the rake and I'm gonna pull myself into it. So I'm doing two things. I have my thumb on the ball to keep it from rolling around. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth like this. Oh, that's just catastrophic. And then we're gonna take our palm, open it up. And all I'm doing is making a big fanning motion with my arm here. Going like this, back and forth like this. And then I'm gonna punch out and bring it back in punch out, bring it back in. So we're gonna do this. Oh, we are getting our smash on this morning. We go all the way up like this. And just in case, because you guys can't see it right now, we got Nicole in the background over there doing some killer gymnastics stuff. I just figured I'd throw her in the video. If you just heard that, it's her saying hi this morning. 5.30 a.m., she's legit. So that's number one. That's gonna keep that scapula from being sucked into the front. Uh, or from being pulled out and keeping that coracoid process, I mean rather, from being sucked into the front. So this is the other thing. Our shoulders need to be nice and upright. Remember the L rule, keep that head nice and tall. So instead of having our shoulders forward like this because we work on keyboards and drive and have this horrific posture, open up that rib cage. So there's some more things we can do for that later, but we'll keep on uh, this, uh, the um, serratus anterior. So we'll take the ball, chuck it down. Now we're gonna actually activate the serratus anterior. So check this out. Grab two bands. We have a super light one and a medium band. You can do the single arm or double arm. Take your arm, lock it out. All you're gonna do is just pull this. So what this is doing is this actually, put your hand under here and you can feel it firing that serratus anterior. If that's too easy, grab higher before you switch bands. All the way, and all the way back down. This is locked out. All the way down, all the way up. If this is too hard, just double up. So I have both sides now. And I'm doing both. Remember what I said, do both. So we can do both at the same time. Do that 15, 20 times, two, three sets. If this is too easy, just grab a thicker band. If you guys graduate up to a green band, you get a savage serratus anterior. Good. Same thing. All you're doing is you're activating that serratus anterior. The higher you get, the more what, what you're doing is you're teaching that, that lower portion of the trap to engage and you're letting that serratus anterior, let's say it's all hot and lit up, you're allowing that serratus anterior to actually do what it's supposed to do, and that is suck that scapula back against the rib cage properly, instead of having just this 
constant state of contraction. Imagine just taking a muscle bicep and just standing like this all day in a contracted position. Or these guys that walk around there like this, I mean, that just kills me. They gotta cramp up, you'd think. So all you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be going like this and back. Again, 10 to 15 times, two, three sets. Just get that, that scapula to start moving. Remember, it's gonna protract the scapula. It's gonna allow us to bring our arms overhead. So that's how important this is. That's number two. You're gonna do the punch out. I know, I keep running back and forth to the camera. Use a pretty heavy band for this. And if I eat it, it's because I just tripped on the PVC pipe. So all I'm gonna do is open my hand, I'll come this way. So I'm doing that reach beyond reach, remember? So if you look at my arm, I'm just bringing it forward and back, forward and back. So I get under some tension, so I take a knee, forward, load up the band, you can hold the hand open, doesn't really matter, and then just give it a punch. So let it come all the way back, elbows locked down. So you're actually shoving that um, humerus into the, into the back of the acetabulum, so all the way into the back of that sock, or the, uh, the uh, glenoid fossa, acetabulum's down here. So if we have this attached to this, that'd be a whole different story. So anyway, we're taking the humerus attached to the, uh, to the glenoid fossa, it's sucked into the back of that shoulder joint. We're just gonna lean forward, and now we can do our punch out. You're gonna come forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. And this is where you're gonna engage some stability. As you can see, when I was doing it, there's a little bit of a wobble in it because there's some tension on the band, and I should be doing this as well. So punch out again, 10 to 15 reps, that's gonna strengthen up that, uh, that serratus anterior. And then um, the last one, this is one of the ones people miss all the time. You take a yoga block. I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna put it right down here. Good, so since we have a lot of neck involvement, we have some neck involvement, check this out. You can take this this way or this way. I like it this way because I want a good fulcrum for my cervical spine. This is where we stretch that anterior longitudinal ligament. So you're just gonna get like this, and you're just gonna let gravity become your friend. And you're just gonna let your head hang back like this. So I can't see the video, there I can. All right, so I know you guys are actually watching this. So it's gonna stretch the anterior longitudinal ligament, which runs down the front of the vertebra, the cervical spine. And it's gonna allow that curve to be the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have about a 37 degree curve in your neck. Most people have this, like military straight curve and what it does puts a lot of strain and tension on all those neurological structures that come out of your neck too so like the cervical plexus the uh, the brachial plexus all the nerves that come out and control all this stuff and uh and you know now we're putting tension on that long thoracic we're putting tension on all this stuff so let the tension off those muscles. Let the tension off those nerves because those nerves have to pass through holes through the muscles. So if they're all stuck and adhere to that fashion, adhere to the muscle, what do you think that nerve's gonna function like? It's not, it's not gonna propagate a signal properly. So that's the other thing. Same with the holes between the bones of the, of, of the cervical spine, they're called the IVF, the, the foramen that the nerve passes through. If they're all crunched down and, they're all, and the vertebrae aren't moving properly, there's just another problem that's waiting to happen. So go ahead and Get that cervical curve, stretch out that, uh, that serratus anterior, do the, uh, do the pull down, arms locked out, straight pull down so you can really activate that, do the punch out, smash out that, uh, that pec minor. Go ahead and get on the pec minor too. Get in the rig stretch. Here, we'll throw a bonus one in here. It's like, oh, it's a Thursday bonus. So we're gonna get in the rig. This is so easy. Lock out the arms like this. Take a step forward so you don't arch your low back. And then just let yourself camp out like this. Your fingers might go numb, it's totally normal. Hang out like this for about a minute, minute and a half. The reason they're gonna be going numb is because there's a neurovascular bundle that runs underneath. Guess what? The pec minor. So if that pec minor's tight, it's gonna be jamming down on that artery, that vein and that nerve that run down the arm. It's gonna go numb. So that's a good sign to show you that if it, it's uh, that's super short and tight. Do all this stuff, get that serratus anterior working, glue that scapula back down on the rib cage because you're gonna recover a lot more of your overhead motion. I'm Trev, Smashworks, Thursday, getting ready to work out. I'll see you guys tomorrow, have a great day.